Use your umbrella. This is a Toastmaster speaking tool. Who knew? Actually, it's a figurative umbrella rather than your using your literal umbrella. But trying to stay organized, trying to keep things in line can be a real conundrum. My husband's in IT and he says there they call it scope creep, where things just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and they don't fit under the meeting or the project's umbrella. Part of the problem is what the elementary school principal from my kids' school used to call bird walking, where you should be going along all on one path and you're not, you're going all over. Or you start on a path and you go over here and you go over there. Those are the worst meetings and they're really confusing speeches because you can only hang on to so much information. So why do we do this bird walking? Well, sometimes we aren't familiar enough with the subject. And we say, hmm, we need to use the shotgun effect and just splatter everybody with lots of information. And that can be one of the reasons. Sometimes we love the subject and it's so big that we can't quite get our arms around it. And so we can't figure out what to put out there. I did a speech on charisma and I had this wonderful book. Here it is, The Charisma Myth. Oh, fantastic book. And I said, I committed to the speech. I did my introduction, sent it out. And I looked at the book and I went, oh, no. this is so big. How am I going to? did everything under my speech umbrella. I did, but oh, man, it was stressful and it took a long time for me to do that. So the thing is, we need to keep everything simple. In this speech, we'll talk about what you can do before you speak, as in creating your speech, and some things some, that you can do when you deliver your speech that will help you stay under your umbrella. So what is the umbrella? It's your purpose. I like that the umbrella has a little point on it, and that is your point. This is your purpose. Why are you giving this speech? You should be able to say it in one sentence. Mine is to help you stay on track, to give you tools for staying on track. I think that will work as my purpose. And there are certain things that you can do to help you stay under that umbrella. An outline. Oh, I love an outline. My goodness, <laughs> it really helps keep me on track. It is a powerhouse for avoiding the bird walking. The introduction, it's that grabber. It's the, the question you ask. It's something to get attention. And then this is when in your introduction or your opening is when your audience kind of gets to know you. But this is also where your purpose starts to become highlighted. And you get to the body of your speech. Body, here's all your information. Everything that you say in this entire outline, in your entire speech, should support your purpose in one way or another. I want you to take a look at this though. Notice that it says main point, main point, main point. Three, just three. You have all sorts of support information for your three points. It doesn't mean you have to do three. I think I'm only doing two. But once you start getting into four and five and six, by the time you get to four, one is gone out of my head. By the time you get to five, it's a jumble six. It's just, it's confusing for my little brain. And it could be hard for your audience to keep track. Jean Tracy, our founder, she said three, four points. That's all you can manage in a five to seven minute speech. Now, Kelly's doing a long presentation. She'll have a lot of more points, but she'll also be really putting in a lot of support information. So that's the body of your speech that supports your purpose. Your conclusion. Your conclusion of your speech should be a summary. 
that supports your purpose. And then that final statement, which usually harkens back to your introduction. You can add repetition into your speech. That helps little red umbrellas throughout mine and talking about the umbrella. Visual aids. I used to teach two and a half hour, seven course, seven courses of two and a half hours each. And man, I love my PowerPoint. <laughs> it really kept me on track. And what you can also do is practice, 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 especially the final version of your speech, because that's what's in your memory banks. And the more confident you are, the better. Sometimes people will ask a question, hey, what about this? Stick a pin in it, answer it later, unless it's something that really supports your purpose, then you can answer it. Sometimes it's your own wild thought because your brain is just zipping along while you are giving your presentation or your speech and you can stick a pin in it. <laughs> Don't deal with it now, it's kind of late for that. And then while you're giving your speech, if you've made your point, just shut up <laughs> and just stop. I would wait until I got some information from my audience that I had made my point, then I could move on. Otherwise, I said it again and again and again in different ways, using different language or different examples. The pause, again, will help you with confidence and keeping track. And I love the little snail, the umbrella. Slow down, stick to your purpose. And you can use your umbrella for preparing for your speech, for delivering your speech. But remember, it gets really crowded under that umbrella very easily. All you can fit in there is maybe three points or three people under your umbrella. So the next time you write a speech, remember, use your umbrella. <laughs>